Hello, hello. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So this video is the second step on how Bernando prepared greens. So if you watch the first video or you're going to watch the first video, you know that we already rinsed everything in salt water and got all the silt out of it. So here's that spinach that this is one bunch of a uh, generous bunch of spinach procured from the farmer's market yesterday. Also, just to show you that these are the stems um, that were cut away from the kale and the collard greens. I've chopped up the kale and collard greens into a more manageable size. I'm not gonna put the whole leaf in there, but I have saved the stems because I'm gonna use these stems either as a base for vegetable stock, or I may use some of it um, as part of my smoothie. This is good stuff right here. So today uh, I'm also using, like I just said, I'm using collard greens and kale. This is what collard greens looks like fresh. This is what at least one version of kale looks like. And I just want to tell you, you know, from over here, you want to cut out the core of the collard greens because it's pretty tough. And, uh, you know, while that can be good for juicing, that's going to be kind of hard and a little challenging for your guests to chew on. Also, I have here a bowl of chopped onions or sliced onions. Fernanda was a big fan of onions. Onions are very good for you. And also, I have got some of Bernando's garlic paste. Over here in this big saucepan, because I got a lot of greens here and I want to make sure I have a lot of room, I have extra virgin olive oil in the bottom of the pan. That's what you want to look for, extra virgin. If you get something that's called natural, that basically means that it's been cut with some other kind of vegetable oil. It could be soy, it could be canola what have you not. You want extra virgin olive oil. So that's the most important thing. So what I'm going to do now, as per this recipe, is going to heat up the olive oil just a bit. And the first thing I'm going to do actually is I'm going to put in a generous amount of garlic. There we go. Put in a generous amount of this garlic. This is Bernando's garlic paste. There's already a video posted on how to make that. This is a great way to store garlic. You know, after you're done, you put it in a jar and put it in the refrigerator, and then you can use it when you need it, cook with, and of course, add it to your superfood smoothies. I'm also going to add the onions to this. Just turn everything around and I'm gonna let these saute for a while. So while that is happening, I am going to get some information for you. This is a real live video <laughs> that I uh, that I left in the other room. I wanted to read you something, so I'm going to go and get that. I'm just going to set the camera down for a moment. I'll let you have a I'll let you have a view of the greens until I return. You can hear the sizzling of the onions in the pan. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back, ladies and gentlemen. So I just wanted to share um, that 
you know, Bernando says in his book, Beyond 100, How to Live Well into Your Second Century, that he steams his greens because he doesn't see any point in pouring nutrients down the drain. I will saute onions and garlic in the saucepan. Then I'll add the greens and mix them together. I'll remove them from the pan, blend in the blender to make a puree, and then pour them back into the pan to warm them. That's the way I do it anyway, he says. So that's from a post on Facebook uh, from about, jeez, uh, already four years ago now. So I just wanted to give a little clarity as to what Fernando means by steam. Of course, there are such things as steamers that you can use. But in this case, he's just talking about, um, you know, the natural steam that's going to be created once we put the vegetables in here. And just a, just a light saute. You know, you just want it to be tender. So I'm stirring this fairly regularly, just waiting for these to become translucent. I don't not I don't have this on a super high flame. I've got this on like a medium flame. Yeah, there we go. Not too high. I could do it a little bit more, but I think this is pretty good. So Fernando used to say, time. It's going to take time. You don't want to rush the process. You rush things along. Things don't come out very well. Things are burned, things are overcooked, things are undercooked. You want to take your time. What I'm going to do is after I saute these greens, I'm going to let it cool down. So I'm then going to make a third video today, a step three video today, so you can see what that blending process looks like. So that's the program. We already talked about uh, the nutrient rich value of greens, but why puree things in the first place? Well, Bernando's feeling was uh, the nutrients, uh, in other words, it doesn't have to rot and lay in your stomach. So he felt that this sort of helped the digestive process along. Of course, the greens are full of fiber, but you know, when you puree something, like when you puree something for a baby, it just helps them to eat it. It helps them to digest it. All right, so already my onions are looking pretty good here. Looking fairly translucent. Going to wait just a tad longer. You want to try and make sure that you cut things up the same size and evenly. See, I got a couple of culprits in here who... Could have been sliced a little bit better. Of course, Bernardo was an expert chef. He was a five-star chef. Doing my best to follow in his footsteps. But I didn't go to the Sorbonne for cooking. <laughs> Not like he did. All right. I'm going to add the kale and the collard greens. I've got a nice deep bowl, a uh, nice big pot here. So you know greens have a lot of volume in the beginning. You don't want to try and put this in a pot that's too small. I used two bunches of collard greens and I used a nice bunch of kale from the market. I'm going to pack that down a little bit. And now I am ready to add my spinach. The greens will reduce in size as you cook them. They're also full of a lot of water. So that gets back to Fernando saying how he preferred to steam his vegetables as opposed to boiling them. If you go to a lot of places, in the south in particular, people will boil 
their greens until they become almost colorless. That's not what we want to do. I am going to employ a pair of tongs to help me turn this. Actually, I can wait a little bit longer. Yep, I'm gonna wait a tad longer. I'm gonna cover this. So somewhere in the cabinet I have a lid that fits this, but I'm just going to use this bowl top for the moment. So I'm going to capitalize on the steam, the natural steam that's being created in there. If you want to be a little bit more prepared than I am, make sure that you have your lid handy. This is the first time I've done a live video as elaborate as, as this one. Give that a couple minutes there, give that a few minutes. Time I'll clean up a little bit. There we go, it's already starting to shrink down. So I want to, I want to turn this, take your time turning it. And I'm doing this because I want everything to be cooked evenly. I've got the flame on low, but I also don't want the onions to, to burn at the bottom of the pan. And I'm using these tongs so I don't burn myself. Now you can put a little sea salt in this if you want to, moderation, but you can also find as your taste buds change, as you clean up your diet and get away from canned foods and processed foods and eat more and more fresh foods that are nutrient dense, your taste buds will change. So it's not a requirement for those people that are need to stay away from salt or want to stay away from salt. But if you are gonna use salt, use sea salt. Now you see how fast this has shrunk down already. Got a couple of strays here that didn't make it into the pot. There you go. You see, it's a nice green color. See that? Nice and green. When I put this stuff in, it was full all the way to the top, and now it has shrunk down to about a third, or even close to a quarter of the size. You can put a little black pepper in this too if you want. So ladies and gentlemen, that's where we are right now. I'm gonna go ahead and let this uh, cook just a little bit longer and when I come back for the third and last step of this Bernardo Lapalo green puree for Thanksgiving preparation and recipe, I will blend it and then pour it back in the pan, show you how that's done. Thank you so much for being here.